Hey guys, how you doing? JP Saricolia here. Now, besides the omnibus format, DC has produced the Absolute Edition, which in my opinion is the best way to collect many miniseries and graphic novels from DC because of the oversized book, because of the quality of the package, and because uh, of their historical importance. So in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to give you my top 10 recommendations of those absolutes that you must own or you must have in your collection. Now, the list is not uh, divided, uh, you know, in any type of order. Uh, I'm just giving you my preferences and my choices. It's up to you to decide why are you going to choose and why are you going to pass. So in the next couple of minutes, stay tuned. Number one, absolute Batman hush. This is to me something that I love. I love this omnibus a lot and I want to say that this is the greatest collection in the world because it is not but the art of Jim Lee and it's just phenomenal. Uh, Jeff Love did a good job. This is a very entertaining story. Uh, I don't think it's bad. Scott Williams inks are amazing. Uh, it's just a great great book overall. Um, you know yeah, it, this is definitely it was my first absolute and still uh, consider one of my best absolutes. Um, I just love it. You know, it's just the oversight. Just looking at Jim Lee's art and this oversized pages, it's just amazing. Uh, and yes, it is. It, I wouldn't say that this will, you know, break your head or will be so complicated, all that. It's not. But I think Jim Lee, this is the quintessential Jim Lee art. This is the best uh, Jim Lee has ever done, in my opinion. So, in my opinion, you most own this one. Yeah, you might not be a big fan of the writing, perhaps. But if you want to own anything from Jim Lee or you want to have anything that Jim Lee has created, you definitely need to have this one. Yeah, you know, Jim Lee has done other things like Superman for Tomorrow, uh, other things also like All Star, Batman and Robin. But in my opinion, this is the best and it's a must have for any absolute collection. Number two, absolute All Star Superman. Now, I got to be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of Grant Morrison's writing. He has never been my favorite writer. I, I, I actually dislike a lot of things he has done. But if I have to choose uh, one story from everything that he has done with DC, I'm going to choose All-Star Superman. I consider this story one of the best Superman stories of all time. I wouldn't say that it's better than Superman for All Seasons. I prefer that from uh, you know Jeff Love and Team Sale. But this one, I would say, comes uh, very closely in second. It's not a bad story. It's good. It really deconstructs Superman, but in a good way. It's not throwing Superman out the window and giving him a personality that he doesn't have. It really is studying the way Superman sees the world, but also the way we see Superman. And in my opinion, that's great. It's a good story. Frank Quietly did a fantastic job with the art. It's amazing. And definitely an absolute version will give you the best option possible to enjoy the story. Number three, absolute uh, Green Lantern and Green Arrow, the hard traveling heroes. Now, I'll tell you this. Um, uh, I'm a big fan of Denny O'Neill uh, as a writer, but also of Neil Adams. Um, they are, in my opinion, so important to comics. Uh, this run perhaps is the oldest run that I have in this collection and this list. Uh, because this was done back in 1970. That's when they created this. It was a seven-issue uh, miniseries or series within the book of Green Lantern. But what I really love about these characters is that they're very different. And they were put together. Uh, and they really changed, the, uh, I would say, the way we saw comics. Because it is a very politically charged comic book stories here. Uh, it's dealing with issues in regards to racism, drug addiction, pollution, all of those ills that we still suffer today. And it was the first time that we saw that in comics in a way that it was never done before. Of course, it was even before I was born. But it changed the way people saw comics then. Of course, the art of Neil Adams is amazing. And seeing it this in a big format is definitely good. Uh, definitely, you see two sides. You see Green Lantern representing the, I would say, the conservative views that we have here in America, for example. And you see Green Arrow being the liberal side. And they are both clashing, but they have to work together to solve every problem. It is an amazing story. It really applies for today. It has been reprinted. And if you have to own something from them from that era, from the 70s, which in my opinion is an amazing era, you have to own this because it changed comics forever. It is a must-have. Number four, absolute at DC, the new frontier. What can I say? I'm in love with this story. The late Darwin Cook did an amazing job. He wrote the story. He created the art. He did an amazing job. 
it is he is pretty much a love letter to the the old comics to the golden age of comics but in a very insightful very smart way it is a beautiful story I do not have that uh, in this case the absolute, but I have the the uh, deluxe edition, and I can tell you one thing: the deluxe edition is perfect for me. I still need to get the absolute, but I love these stories. I love it because the art is amazing. But most importantly, not only the art, because at the end of the day, it's not about the art that really uh, draws people, draws people in the beginning, but to keep people engaged, you have to have the stories, and that one could just manage to create such a beautiful story. So if you cannot find the absolute that has been reprinted and now is now for sale, you. You can still find the deluxe edition now they call it the black label but in my opinion this is a must own this is the most have for any dc fan number five absolute batman the dark knight now this one includes uh, the dark knight returns and the dark knight strikes again now i don't care much about dark knight strikes again it's okay it's it's okay but the dark knight return it's considered by many a very as a quintessential book in in the DC library. You have to have it. Um, I would say that I I've never been a I would say a top fan of the Dark Knight uh, Returns. I still consider it very important, and it's a very good story. You know, of course, written by uh, and drawn by Frank Miller and Klaus Johnson did the inking, so they did a fantastic job in putting this together. It's so important to have because it has changed the way we saw comics in the '80s. Of course, it was uh, produced back in 1986, and it changed comics uh, forever. You know, it's one of those books. Uh, so many people have accused to be the cause of the darkening of Batman, but at the same time, it's so important because it really changed the way people saw Batman and also gave more maturity to the character. You know, of course, you see a jaded old Batman in an Elseworld story, but definitely it's one that it's still it's prevalent today and a lot of people love and definitely you must have. Number six, and I'm going to cheat on this one because I'm going to include two for the price of one. A absolute Batman Year One and Absolute Batman The Killing Joke. Now, why I put them together, let me explain. Uh, year One was published in 1987, created by Frank Miller and David Masukeli after the success of Daredevil Born Again at Marvel. It's an origin story, of course, of Batman. It really sets the stage of his motivations on how he became the Batman. Now, The Killing Joke, it is uh, definitely an origin story of the Joker. I'm not going to say that I'm a big fan of the story. I don't think it's the best uh, story by Alan Moore. But Brian Bolin and John Higgins did a fantastic job with, the, in this case, the, the art and, of course, the color. This absolute, these are not really big collections. But what I love about them is because you have two versions on each absolute. You have the in this case the new recolors that is the one that is been sold everywhere but you also have the original coloring the original colors in my opinion that's great they did that with both collections i wish more collections did the same thing i wouldn't say that these are stories that everyone appreciate but if you want to understand batman and the joker uh, as they are written nowadays understand their motivation understand why they are who they are and what they do what they do you have to really know this stories and you have to have the stories yeah you don't have to be sympathetic with the stories but in order to you understand the characters you have to have them so definitely this are must have in any dc collection number seven absolute dc kingdom come i can tell you one thing alex ross is an amazing an amazing artist this is perhaps his best work uh, in my opinion at dc of course he has done other great books there's different collections you got justice you have also world's greatest heroes which is a collection of different stories with paul dini but in this case alex ross does a fantastic job and of course the writing is mark wade but in my opinion the art is the eye catcher is the greatest thing about the story i love it because it's also criticism of the darkness you know of course we in the previous absolutes i mentioned some more darker themes this is a kind of uh, a criticism of that idea or really going back to the beginning that not leaving uh, stories in the hands of people that don't really appreciate uh, i would say a lot of the characters and their here superheroes traits uh, and it's more classical in that sense but also it does have some dark elements as well but it's a great mature uh, story and I love it if you have to have something from Alex Ross you have to have Kingdom Come in my opinion it's his best work uh, or at, at least the most famous most popular but also uh, the most quintessential when people think about Alex Ross they think about Kingdom Come so it is a must-have in any absolute collection 
Number eight, absolute crisis on infinite earths. Now, this is a very difficult book to find. It hasn't been reprinted yet. I think there's there are plans to uh, reprint the collection. But if you have to have this collection, besides, of course, you know, we have the box set, which is huge. Uh, besides, of course, the deluxe editions, um, I would say the absolute is the best way to go. If you can find it, of course, it's going to be very expensive. But if you can find it, I would say go for it. Uh, the art of George Perez and the writing of Mark Wolfman really defined this story. Of course, in the 80s, uh, prior to that, you know, DC had a big mess with so many storylines, so many variations and versions of every character. So they had to kill him and they smartly did it through this crossover event. It is quintessential in any DC collection. You have to have it because it really defined everything that came after and definitely defined the way we see DC comics today. So it is a must have. Number nine, absolute Batman, the court of owls. Now I can tell you this, I I'm not a fan of the new 52. There were good things that happened in the new 52. Uh, Brian Azzarello's the Wonder Woman was great. And I would say uh, in this case, of course, Scott Snyder's and Greg Capullo's Batman was phenomenal. Uh, Scott Snyder understands Batman. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, of course, we can be so critical about everything that has been produced in the last 20, 30 years in the, in the world of Batman. Uh, uh, people don't like it, particularly if you grew up in the Bronze Age, you don't like the new Batman. But if you really appreciate some of the writing that has been done and some of the stories that have been created and crafted under the guise of many writers, I would say Scott Snyder is one at the top. He is definitely very good at it. He understands the character well. And Greg Capullo, my God, this art is amazing. It's just great. And seeing it in that format is just, uh, you know, it's eye candy. There's no other way to put it. Now, you have the omnibus for, for this collection. But in my opinion, the omnibus was poorly devised. It's not well, uh, you know, executed. Of course, the binding is terrible. So if I have to choose something, even if you get the omnibus, you still have to have this one because you have to enjoy the first 11 issues and the best way possible the art is amazing the story is good is it really engaging so it is a must-have for any Batman fan and for any DC fan number 10 and this is the last on my list and this I cannot just pass it is the Watchmen. you have to have the Watchmen, and the best format to have it is the absolute yeah there is the deluxe I also recommend the deluxe is great it has some extra content that in this case uh, this version doesn't have. I think the newer versions have it, but uh, the, uh, this case, the original versions like this one didn't have it. But my God, this is an amazing book. It's an amazing story. Um, Alan Moore outdid himself. In my opinion, this is the best work he has ever done. This is perhaps the best absolute. It is the best comic book story of all times. You know, it is what it is. You know, you have to love it for what it is, whether you like the dark tone or not. It is just well written, well devised, and well put together. And it's a deconstruction of characters. Yes, it is, but it is done in a in a in a masterful way. So you have to have it. In my opinion, it is a must have. And if you don't think that way, well, I, you know, I respect your opinion. But for any DC fan, this needs to be on your list. This needs to be on your shelf. Well, guys, there you have it. Now. I have to tell you that this is definitely my top 10 list. You know, everyone has a different of opinion. Now, on this list, I did not count anything that has been produced under the Vertigo, the America's Greatest Comics, uh, the Cliffhanger, or the Wildstorm imprints. Those were separate stories. There are absolutes for all of them. There's so many, like the Sandman, the League of Starting Gentlemen, Danger Girl. Uh, you also have the Wildcats, you know, Authoritary, the Planetary, all of them. You know they're great but they're not they were not produced under the dc label so i would not recommend i would not say that i don't recommend them i will have probably a video where i can count those in the future but if you want to have the top 10 only 10 absolute editions in my opinion these are the must have uh, there's other runs like in this case the long halloween dark victory uh, the haunted night those are part of the jeff Love and team sale omnibus uh, those are but also they're great and, and there's so many absolutes you know flashpoint they're great stories but in my opinion the list that i gave you is the top 10 i consider those are the best and the must have but what is your opinion? What is your list? Uh, what do you think about these stories? Do you like them? You don't? Is there anyone that you consider, anything that you consider better than this? Let me know in the comments below. So once again, my friends, thanks for watching. God bless you. Take care. And I'll talk to you again. Bye-bye.